Hey everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of Smart and Vinyl, where we're going to talk a little records, a little music, and a whole lot of mess. So thanks for joining me. I know it's been forever and ever and ever. Um, you know, life happens, and that's no excuse. It's no excuse. But I'll be honest, you know, it's kind of in the dumps. I mean, it's the holidays. It's supposed to be in the dumps during the holidays, at least me, at least me, but, um, no, I just got busy with the holidays, and, you know, I had to help my dad move, and I got sick, I got that bird flu, swine flu, asshole flu that's going around, and I spent New Year's Day in the emergency room, so, what a way to start the new year, but, like Howard Jones says, things can only get better, uh, uh, oh, oh, anyways, so, I still have a little bit of a cough, really, like, <coughs> like that but I gotta get through this video because it's due I'm so due for a video and guess what weird Paul gave me like the best shout out in the world so thank you weird Paul and I got some new subscribers because of that so hey new subscribers thanks for tuning in and um, hopefully you'll like my videos and thanks to the old subscribers for hanging on in there I appreciate it um, I'm om not almost I'm like still like 28 away from my goal of 100 subscribers, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Sorry, my bangs are all back, but I'm getting there. So let's just keep getting some subscribers. I really appreciate it. So let's get into it. Now, this is episode 30, which is pretty impressive. I mean, to me, um, I've never made a video until I started making these. Um, you know, so the fact that I hit 30 is pretty impressive. I mean, to me, to me. So I thought I would do a record that also turned 30 this year. So that means it had to be put out in 1998. Um, I was going to do Nights of Reb, but I'm looking. I'm like, oh, my Nights of Reb album came out in 1990. So, you know, when I do the 90th episode, maybe, I don't know. But I, did ha I do have an album that came out in 1988. And it's actually an album that I really, really like. So double bonus. Hold on. Cough. Cough time. <coughs> so... Let's get into it. And that album is, drum roll. Ooh, Danzig. Yes, Danzig. I know. Um, I've talked about this before. On paper, I should not be a Morrissey fan because I've always liked harder rock. I love all kinds of music, but it seems like my taste, you know, I either like hard kind of heavy metal stuff or goofy, smart, humorous, new wavy shit, right? Um, Morrissey falls in there somewhere. But anyways, I love the man. But I love Danzig. And I actually loved Danzig uh, before I loved Morrissey. And, you know, when I became punk rock in high school, like everyone did, uh, I liked the Misfits the best, surprisingly. Um, I don't know. Just, it was catchy. You know, it, the songs were short. They were catchy. I liked the horror movie aesthetic. It's just something about them. And to this day, I still like the Misfits a lot. Um, I still say they're my favorite punk band. They are. So you know, in case you didn't know, right, what you do, but in case you didn't, Glenn Danzig was the singer and creator of the Misfits. Then after Misfits, he did Sam Hain. Then he went Danzig, right? Um, sorry. <coughs> so anyways, so this is the first album of Danzig that came out in 1988. Um, it was also the first release on Rick Rubin's Deaf American label. You know who Rick Rubin was, producer, Beastie Boys, all of that. But he was actually a really big Sam Hain fan. So made sense to do Danzig. So yes, this album was the very first album on Rick Rubin's Deaf American label. Um, it's pretty nifty. I have a promotional copy with a sticker on it. But when it was originally released, it didn't say Danzig anywhere on it. It was just the skull. So let's open up the skull. Ding, ding. All right. So, um, here we go. Lost my train of thought for a second. Sorry. It's the, the cold medicine. But, um, so it came out in 1988 and it was, a, well, not different from Sam Hain. It was better. Because some of the Sam Hain stuff got brought over to Danzig. Like a few songs were kind of Sam Hain-ish until they became Danzig songs. Um, you know, the biggest hit that you know on this album is Mother. And I guess that's the biggest hit everyone knows from Danzig. But Mother is on this album. Swear to God, true story, right? I remember a million years ago, I was dating a guy and his brother got into it with me about mother. And I'm like, oh yeah, it's on the first Danzig album. No, it's not. It's on 
and he brought up um thrall demon sweat live i'm like no that's mother 93 that's like the live retooled version i go it was originally on danzig one no it wasn't and he gets into me and i'm like look motherfucker mother was on the first album and sure enough i proved it then you know i had to i had to tell him to go get his fucking shine box i had to because you know what Nothing feels better than being right. And I am right about Danzig because at this time I was a huge Danzig fan. Like, shouldn't even be an issue. So anyways, um, but yes, Mother is on this album. Um, there are some other, I guess, hits, you know. Um, Twist of Cain, which a lot of people know. Um, you know, it's all Twist of Cain, oh, oh, that's, yeah. We always sing it Crystal Drano because we're creative like that. But, um... Twisted Cane's a pretty big song. Um, here's a rumor. There might be a rumor. Fun fact. Uh, James Hetfield from Metallica sang backup on Twist of Cane and Possession. Which I'm really surprised because, like, this album doesn't suck. You know, you think he would just bring the suckness on this, but he doesn't. So, it's okay. It's okay. This album survived, you know, the suck fest. But, yeah, James Hetfield sang background vocals on those two songs. Um... I'm trying to think what I'm trying to think of my dance knowledge. It's been a while, guys. It's been a while. Um, here's something interesting, right? Hold on. Let me get a cough out because this is going to be a doozy. Hold on. <coughs> okay. So on here, when you open up the lyric sheet, right? Oh, let's, let's look at the record. So it's like, you know, Ooh, so scary, right? Um, when you look at the lyric sheet, it says all songs written by Danzig. That's it. All songs written by Danzig, right? Glenn Danzig. But, 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 there's actually a cover on here. And eventually, like, they did acknowledge that it was a cover, but it does not have those credits on here. Um, I don't think it's a secret, but, you know, I find it interesting. And I, I only discovered it because I heard the original one day in the car, and I'm like, why do I know this song? Why do I know this song? And I realized it was Danzig. So, The Hunter on here was actually done first by Albert King and it was written by Booker T and the MGs which you know they're pretty cool so technically Danzig you did not write all the songs on this album but anyways I'm willing to overlook that because The Hunter actually is a really great song and um I do like Danzig's take on it a little better but anyways but but um there's been some other times Danzig's kind of like fudge the the truth a little bit you know and I know by going into this he's gonna get mad and come beat me up <laughs> don't beat me up Danzig I'm sorry but I need some shit to talk about regarding this record hold on cough time <coughs> so other than the hunter okay um I was listening to some Spotify it was like whatever birth of R&B or something because I like other stuff you know and I hear this song and I'm like why do I know this song? Oh, because it sounds like Rat Fink, which is The Misfits. And it's actually called Rag Mop, right? And um, I'll try to play some for you. I know I've never played any music during my videos, but let's try. Hopefully I don't get booted. If I do, I'll cut it out. But here, let's listen to a little bit of it, okay? And then we'll, we'll see. So here it is. Right. Okay. So that sounds like Rat Fink, and you're like, "Wow, what a rip off!" But Danzig really didn't rip off Rag Mop, which is by Lionel Hampton. Alan Sherman <laughs> ripped off Rag Mop with his version of Rat Fink. So actually, Danzig covered Alan Sherman's Rat Fink, which was a cover of Rag Mop. Okay. But once again, on the liner notes, uh, Rat Fink was the B side to the. Uh, Night of the Living Dead single from The Misfits. It doesn't credit Alan Sherman. It's all songs written by Danzig. So I guess it's a, you know, mantra. All songs written by Danzig. All songs written by Danzig. You know, um, you know, also too, um, I'll get, well, you know, I'll get into it when I talk about the, well, okay, fuck it, fuck it. Let's just do it. So I also have this album, Lucifuge, which is Danzig 2, which is a great album. Great album. But... There's a song on here called Snakes of Christ, right? And you always hear that uh, Stone Temple Pilots ripped off Snakes of Christ, that guitar riff. Um, you know what? Snakes of Christ, to me, 
Sounds like a ripoff of War Machine by Kiss. So who's ripping off who? You know, uh, I think War Machine came out first. So once again, it's another kind of, well, is it a ripoff? Is it not? All I know now is Danzig's going to come rip off my head. But whatever. Sorry. Sorry, Danzig, that I ruined it. But uh, you know what? I got to say, I like Snakes of Christ better than War Machine. Sorry, Gene. But anyways, so that's on this album. We're not going to get into that because it's not its 30th anniversary. But let's get back to Danzig, Danzig. Um, what is interesting about this is that this is like one of the only albums, if not the only album, that has a explicit lyric sticker on it now with no profanity there's no profanity on this album i think the worst word on there is whore right so that's interesting i guess it's the content that was questionable so no profanity just um evil goodness you know so um that is a fun fact for this album um it comes gatefolded like i said with that's chuck biscuits i think it's erie vaughn that's john christ and then danzig um and then i think officially sorry <coughs> officially i've heard the album has a two-sided lyric sheet but mine does not mine says deaf american and just has the lyrics maybe later versions do i'm not sure um here's another fun fact this album was re-released unofficially in 2014 with colored vinyl um everything i've read said that they are counterfeit and maybe not counterfeits the right word I, I would say unofficial which i guess technically makes it bootleg they look pretty good to me whatever so that's my little video about danzig one uh or dance self-titled whatever you want to call it it really is a great album and as much as i shit on it i really don't because i really do love glenn danzig i love misfits i love sam hain other people do too because when you see those dancing memes they're like hysterical right and he seems to take it in a good fun especially the cat litter one um there's great songs on here and by all means i suggest getting it danzig one two and three really are are great great albums even if you're not like into danzig you just want some good rock get them all three of those albums are pretty pretty awesome um you know going back to the whole Danzig versus Morrissey thing in my life. You know, and this is just a thought of mine. I'm not sure if it's true, but I always assumed when Elvis died, right? With 1977, right? When Elvis died, I think half of his spirit went into Morrissey and half of his spirit went into Danzig. Because if you think about it, 1977 is when they both kind of got really started into music. You know, um, I think Morrissey got the more sensitive in the ghetto side of Elvis, where Danzig got the shoot the car and shoot the TV part of Elvis, you know, the gruffer part. But it makes sense because they're both very Elvis-like when they're singing, uh, you know, uh, Devil Lock is just a pompadour the other way, right? So... That's what I think. So that's maybe why I like both of them. But anyways, that's my 30th video today. And thanks for watching. So more coming down the line. I know I always say that. But now that, you know, I'm feeling a little better, um, we'll, we'll, we'll get on a roll again. And I'm going to go see the tubes in a couple weeks. So maybe I'll do a tubes video because, you know, I love the tubes. So anyways, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Tell a friend, tell a friend. And we'll see you next time on Smart and Vinyl. So for me to you, from Danzig's Devil Lock to you, we'll see you later. And we'll see you on the next episode of Smart and Vinyl. Thanks.